Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving praise and honor to Jehovah God and thanking him for all of our lives. You may be seated. Praying that the Most High would bless us this day with his presence, that he would open up all of our lips that our mouths may declare his praise as we come before him on this day to give honor and praise unto him to acknowledge that there is none else beside Jehovah who has created the heavens and the earth. As we read in the beginning of the book of Genesis where it says that God created the heavens and the earth. And then from then on, we learn what the Most High God wants for humanity to follow. Amen. But we see also within the book of Genesis, after the flood during the time of Noah, that generations after that, Jehovah God selected one man, Abraham, and made a covenant with him. Mm-hmm. Made that covenant with Abraham, and through Abraham, who had a son Isaac, and then mm-hmm. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Amen. And the Most High God changed, or Jehovah God changed the name of, changed Jacob's name to Israel. And as we proceed to read within the first five books, we see that from the from that point in the book of Genesis or throughout Exodus and even afterwards, the Holy Scriptures is talking about one group of people. Even though we know that Jehovah God created the heavens and the earth, he's in control of all things. But he focuses his attention on one group of people because of the covenant and the love that he made with Abraham, also with Isaac, with Jacob, that has allowed those children, the children of Israel, to still be alive today and will never disappear from the face of the earth. Although we see throughout the history, we see even after Jehovah God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, and the amount of sins, the iniquities, the rebellions that were committed by the children of Israel in the desert, that the Most High caused the children of Israel to stay within the desert, to stay within that wilderness for 40 years. So we've come to the point in time where we're reading now where Moses is within that 40th year of the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt, and he's delivering to the generation that is, is going to, from here, just to see exactly where we are, we, we're in the book of, we're going to be in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 26, but Deuteronomy chapter 1 starts by saying, these are the words with Moses spoken to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness in the Arabah over against Suf between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hatzero and Dizahav. It is 11 days journey from Horeb unto Kwadesh Barnea by the way of Mount Seir. And it came to pass in the 40th year and the 11th month on the first day of the month that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel according all, according unto all that Jehovah had given him in commandment unto them. So from here, this is where we read about the commandments, statute, and the judgments that were given to the children of Israel all throughout the book of Deuteronomy. Again, this is in the 40th year of the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt. And Moses is speaking to this group of people, this generation that is going to cross over into the land. So as we're reading these words and as we read these commandments, we also have to take in these words as well and acknowledge that the Most High is speaking to us also. That these, these words are, and this will be read when we read in the chapters to come, in the weeks to come, or you could always read it on your, on your own, that where Moses is telling the children of Israel that these, he's not only speaking to them that are before him that time, but he's also speaking in, to the generations to come. So here we are today in this generation, in this year that they call 2024, reading these words, and these words have to be impactful in our lives and cause us to make the change, the necessary changes in our lives in order that we can turn away from evil and do good. So we are in a good position right now because we are in a place where we pray that the most high God's presence is among us and allowing us the opportunity to hear his words. Now we just have to make sure we keep our ears open to hear the words that the most high had to speak into us. So we, at this time, we're going to go right into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26. So that background which is given just to show who was speaking at the time, which is Moses, who he's speaking about, Jehovah God, who's giving him these words, and who he's speaking to, which are the children of Israel. Because a lot of these things won't be so evident in the chapters that we're reading, but again, everything has to be read in context. Everything has to be read with a flow. Mm-hmm. So again, this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel at this time. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it shall be when thou art come into the land which Jehovah thy power giveth thee for an inheritance, and do possess it, and dwell therein, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the ground which thou shalt bring in from thy land that Jehovah thy power giveth thee, and that thou shalt put it in a basket, and shalt go unto the place which Jehovah thy power shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. And thou shalt come unto the priest that shall be in those days, and shall say unto him, I profess this day unto Jehovah thy power, that I am come unto the land which Jehovah swore unto our fathers to give us. 
And the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand, at the fourth verse, and set it down before the altar of Jehovah thy power. So this section here is talking about first fruits. Could we read about that throughout the first five books? That even in the book of Le Leviticus chapter 19, it says, when you plant a new tree, you let it grow for three years without touching it. And in the fourth year of that tree, the fruit of that is holy, and it's to be, to be given in thanksgiving unto Jehovah God. Just to paraphrase. So the first, that, that is considered the first fruits. So the first fruits, again, are the fourth year of every tree that, had, that bears fruit when it, after it's planted. So within this year, this is the proclamation that, that individuals have to make when they're giving of these first fruits unto the priests. Because this is where the first fruits are going to, because the Most High God does not eat. But it's a system that the Most High God set up so that the priests can survive, and through the priests, other people can su survive as well. So again, the first fruits are going to the priests, and again, this proclamation is made here. And thou shalt speak and say before Jehovah thy power at the fifth verse. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and he became there a great, uh, he became there, Sleeker, a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians dealt ill with us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And we cried unto Jehovah, the God of our fathers, and Jehovah heard our voice and saw our affliction and our toil and our oppression. And Jehovah brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he brought us unto this place and have given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first of the fruit of the land which thou, O Jehovah, hast given me. And thou shalt set it down before Jehovah thy God and worship before Jehovah thy God. So in the proclamation, the history is also being mentioned. Talking about Jacob, who was from, the, from Aram, which is in modern day Syria. And then as the time went forth and Jacob had children, he, we know he had the, his 12 sons, which became each one a progenitor of a tribe. And then after a period of time that they went into Egypt, we know that Yosef, his, his 11th son, went there first. And then through that, then the rest of the, Jacob and the rest of his sons, through the famine and everything that took place, were also went into Egypt. And that they flourished there. So this is the history. We have to also, we have to always remember our history. Mm -hmm. Good and the bad. And that's one of the things that the Holy Scripture shows us. Right. It shows us to our face the good and the bad. Many nations only talk about their good. Right. But the most high in his infinite wisdom gives us an opportunity to read our good and our bad. Yes, so, and also he teaches us to make a difference between the good and the bad, between the clean and the unclean, between the whole and the common, between the right and the wrong. He gives us the opportunity to make these choices. We just have to make sure that we make the right choices. Amen. But again, knowing our history is very important. Amen. And this would become evident as we continue to read. But again, just in delivering the first fruits to the priests, the proclamation of the history is made, is made known there. So the children of Israel became numerous in Egypt. The Egyptians afflicted the, the children of Israel, and then through the cry out of the children of Israel in Egypt, the Most High, Jehovah God, heard the cries of the children of Israel and sent those signs and those wonders in order for the children of Israel to be released. And again, this is how we express our thanksgiving to the Most High God by relating the history and all the good things that he did on our behalf. So again, even individually, we'll be making our prayers to the Most High. Also know your own history. Know the walk of life that the Most High brought. You know, some people were born in this way of life. Some people were not born in this way of life. But whatever that way is, just be able to relate that history to, to the Most High and show him and express the thanks that you're giving unto him that he allowed you to, be from, to go from where you were before to where you are now. Amen. And also praying that the Most High will allow you to, eat, to do much better in the future because after you all, do all of this with the first fruits, it says here in this verse 11. And thou shalt rejoice in all the good which Jehovah thy God have given unto thee and unto thy house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is in the midst. So acknowledge that Jehovah God gives you everything. Amen. You didn't get anything out of your own power. That's what we read also in early in the book of Deuteronomy. He gives us the power to obtain wealth. So any, if you have a dollar in your pocket, just give praise to the Most High that he allowed you to get that dollar. Amen. If you have $20 in your pocket, if you have $50 in your pocket, if you have a million dollars in your pocket, Amen. which is possible, just give praise your credit card. Just give praise to the Most High that he allows you to obtain that wealth. Because there are many people that don't have half, a third, an eighth, five-eighths of what we have. So it also teaches us that when we come to a place to worship, we know that we are blessed by the Most High, that he has taught us this information, 
that we also have to look out for one another. We have to think of, you know, think better for one another and not look down because the world is looking down on us. When we leave here, we, we deal with many problems, whether it's at work and at school, where we are strangers to the people that we are in contact with outside. So therefore, we should not be strangers to one another within or treat each other as strangers or be made to feel like strangers from within. Because the Most High gives us all the power to obtain wealth. Next section. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithe of thine increase in the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it into, unto the Levite, to the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be satisfied. So and we're gonna, before we continue, it's a very important point right here, talking about tithing. Every third year, and this again, when we're in the land of Israel, every third year, the tithing, which is 10% of your produce, goes to, as it says here, the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, at, that they may eat within thy gates. Mm -hmm. So if you end up giving tithes to a pastor, reverend, oh, yeah. preacher, right. that's automatically going against what the word of the Most High God is showing. Because the Most High shows exactly what tithes are for, right. who they go to, and when they are done. And when you give your tithes, this is something that if somebody's going to tell you that you have to give tithes, mm -hmm. they also have to tell you that this is what you're supposed to say after you give your tithes. Mm -hmm. Continue. Then shall thou say before Jehovah thy God. So this is before Jehovah God, not before the person you're giving the tithes to. You're making this proclamation before Jehovah God, Jehovah God, as you're giving this tithe, and you're saying this. I have put away the hollow things out of my house. So tithes are holy. And have also given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandment which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed any of thy commandments, Neither have I forgotten. So the command is to give the tithes to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. And if you're not doing so, then you're transgressing the, co the, co the commandments. Because it says when you do this, you make this proclamation and say, I have not transgressed any of thy commandments. And then you continue to say this. I have not eaten thereof in my morning. So tithes are food, because you're eating the tithes. So it's coming from food. It's coming from a food source. Continue. Neither have I put away thereof, being unclean, nor given thereof for the dead. I have hearkened to the voice of Jehovah my God. I have done according to all that thou hast commanded. So again, it teaches the tithes are from produce, as I said earlier. You have the tithing of the increase of your ground. So when the grain comes up, you're taking 10% of that and you're giving it to the Levite, to the widow, to the stranger, to the fatherless. Not to a place for them to flourish and not you. It's to make sure that people that do not have are taken care of. And you have to, because this is a command, you have to make this proclamation when you're giving tithes. And then it says here in this verse. Look forth from thy holy habitation, at the 15th verse, from heaven, and bless thy people, Yisrael, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou didst swore unto our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. So what's interesting, at the end of that proclamation, after you give your tithes, based on what the Most High has blessed you with, and you're able to take 10% of that and give it, you're not asking for a blessing for yourself. It says, you look forth from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people, Yisrael. Our existence for other people, not for ourselves. We already have. So we, you, know, it's, you don't need to ask the Most High to bless you when he has already blessed you. So when you're doing good, you're asking the Most High to bless other people. Because he had a blessing. So, what you, again, what you receive is for other people to enjoy. Hallelujah. So, the same way that's how we do it with all of our lives. Even the information that the Most High has taught us, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of these commandments, is not for us to be, to be blessed. It's for us to be a blessing to other people. And as we're doing these commandments, we're asking the Most High to bless the children of Israel. Because as we read throughout this book, we don't read our individual names in terms of redemption. The Most High is redeeming the children of Israel. So therefore, our mind should be focused on the entire nation and not upon ourselves. That's why it says here, as part of the proclamation, you're asking God to bless your people and not yourself, who is the one that is given the tithes. Continue. This day, which, this day, Jehovah thy God commanded thee to do these statutes and ordinances, that thou therefore observe and do them with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched Jehovah this day to be thy God, that thou hast that thou wouldest walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his judgments. 
Slockley, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his ordinances and hearken unto his voice. And Jehovah have avouched this day to be his to be his own peculiar to be his own treasure, Slockley, as he have promised thee, and thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations as he have made in praise and in name and in glory, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto Jehovah thy God as he have spoken. So at all of this, what Moses is saying, that on this day that they're on the plains of Moab getting ready to cross over the Jordan River, that the children of Israel have professed. That's when the word avouched, because that's probably one of the few places you can actually see that the word avouched. So it might throw some people off. But you're professing this day that Jehovah is your God. And Jehovah God has professed that the children of Israel are his people. And in professing that the children of Israel are his people, it means that the children of Israel are a holy people unto Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. And who he has made in praise and in name and in glory. That is the responsibility of the children of Israel. So as those of us that claim to be Israelites, that claim to be the children of Israel, we have to carry ourselves as holy people in name and in praise not just on the holy days, not on the Sabbath day, but every day that we're alive. To make sure that everybody that comes in contact with us, that they know that there is a God in heaven and that he has a people. So it's our responsibility even today that we have a vow that we have professed. That's the reason why we gather here, those are gathering online. That the God that created the heavens and the earth and in this place, we pronounce his name as Jehovah. Many people around the world may pronounce his name as Yahweh. But we know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We just may have a difference in how we pronounce it, but we, we want to make it known who we're speaking about right. and not anyone else, That's not true. any God, because anybody else is the imagination of a human being. Yeah. Human beings have made gods to bow down to worship. Right. Jehovah God made us to bow down to worship before him, right. and that is right. the difference. And That's we right. cannot see him. That's why within the Ten Commandments it said that Jehovah is God by himself, and, we sh and also after the Second Commandment we should not make any graven images to bow down to mm -hmm. because we cannot see Jehovah God. But we know that he sees us. Even if we, if we think we're in our privacy, he's the one that sees us. Right. And things that you, you might have thought that was in your past, the most high could bring it out to the entire world. Yes. As it was mentioned earlier, because you know, many people were partying to Diddy in the 90s <laughs> and didn't know what was going on and thought everybody was clear. And in 2024, everything is coming to light. Still allegations, you have to mention, mention this, allegations. But the Most High can bring what is in the dark out to the light. To the light. So think about that. If he's doing that to somebody out in the world stage, imagine your own life and the secrets that you may have. So those are, that's the reason why to hold on to the Most High. That's why when Yom Kippur comes around, which is coming around very soon, it's called the Day of Atonement, or in Hebrew, the Day of the Covering, where the Most High covers our iniquities, transgressions, and sins. But if you want to go back to those wrongs you were doing, that cover can come off and be exposed to everybody that did not see it before. That's the lesson the Most High is showing us even during this time. Continue. 27th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Prophet Moshe and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command thee this day, and it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over the Jordan unto the land which Jehovah thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And before we continue, again, even in that beginning of this chapter, Moses is saying again, keep all the commandments. It's incumbent upon us to keep all of these commandments. Not just the Ten Commandments that we read in Exodus chapter 20, but keep all of it. But those are very important as well, to acknowledge that there is only one God. We're not going to bow down to any idols. We're not going to take the name of God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, which is very important for us to do. We should not take this day lightly. It is a day to rejoice. It is a day to enjoy. It's a day to delight in as we are commanded to delight in this day, but acknowledge the seriousness of this day mm -hmm. and, and acknowledge the things that we may introduce into this day that should not be introduced into this day. The Most High has commanded us just to rest. And, it's, you know, unfortunately, we live in a time where we just can't imagine doing nothing. Right. But that's what the Most High is commanding us to do on the Sabbath day, do nothing. But because our minds are so active, we want to find something to do. But imagine back when Moses was speaking to the children of Israel then. They didn't have the things that we had today, and they still enjoyed the Sabbath day. So we just have to, you know, sometimes get back to those old ways. And then continue on, honor our fathers and our mothers. 
Don't commit murder, which we're going to read about just now within these curses. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't be forced against your neighbor. Don't cover anything that belongs to anybody. Those are the Ten Commandments. Also, he said all of the commandments. Leviticus chapter 11 is very important in terms of eating clean animals as opposed to the unclean and making a separation between the clean and the unclean. Knowing when you are unclean to separate yourself during that period of, you know, that time of separation, male and female. Even the, the minuscule things we consider such, such as shaving, which is most how God has commanded us not to do. All of these things are the commands. So Moses doesn't say just keep the commands. He, he always says keep all the commandments. We're supposed to remember everything. But this is a procedure that Moses is telling the children of Israel that they're supposed to do when they cross the Jordan River, which you read about actually in the book of Joshua when the children of Israel actually did cross the Jordan. But he tells them to do this. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law at the third verse. When thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which Jehovah thy God giveth thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, as Jehovah the God of thy fathers hath promised thee. And it shall be when ye are passed over the Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto Jehovah thy God, an altar of stones, Thou shalt lift up no iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of Jehovah thy God of unhewed stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto Jehovah thy God. And thou shalt sacrifice peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and thou shalt rejoice before Jehovah thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plain. So it's important for the children of Israel when they perform this procedure as I mentioned on Mount Abel, they're going to put all these stones together and build an altar of unhewn stone. Just however the stones were there, they put these stones together and they're going to do the burnt offerings before Jehovah God. But also what's written on these stones or all of the commandments of Jehovah God very plain. So that when people read this, they can understand it. So you need somebody with some good penmanship to write this. So there's no excuses for anybody that they said they didn't understand the writing and the penmanship was off and there was a word missing or they didn't understand this letter. So it's written very plainly so that we can all understand. As we read these books today, we have books that have some nice print. So it's very plain to us what we're supposed to be doing. And we're not supposed to have an excuse to do otherwise. So that's part of the procedure. And it continues on saying this. And Prophet Moshe and the priests, the Levites, spoke unto all Yisrael, saying, Keep silence and hear, O Yisrael, this day. Thou art become a people unto Jehovah thy God. Thou shalt therefore hearken into the voice of Jehovah thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So this is repetitive. Again, Moses, probably one day we can actually count how many times in the first five books Moses says to keep the commandments. That's the stress how important keep the commandments are. Right. So when we, again, tomorrow we're supposed to be keeping commandments. The, day is the second day of the week, and all, keep the commandments. And this is not something difficult to do. It makes it difficult because we want to assimilate with other people who are not keeping commandments. Okay. But it also acknowledge, as it said here in that verse, thou shalt therefore hearken to the... Actually, before that. Keep silence and hear, O Israel, this day thou art become a people unto Jehovah thy God. So thinking of those words and thinking of the God that spoke and everything came into existence from nothing. Thinking about how he made everything in six days and he ceased from all work in the seventh day. Thinking about how he's able to bless each and every one of us individually as well as collectively. Mm -hmm. But the individuals of the world that do not hearken to the voice of Jehovah God, we should not be ashamed of living this way of life before them. Because Jehovah God is the one that gives us life. He's the one that gives us blessings. He's the That's one right. that gives us peace, not the people that are around about us. So we should not be afraid or ashamed of sharing our way of life, just like nobody else is afraid or ashamed of sharing their way of life. Exactly. You go to school, you go to work, everybody's going to do what they're going to do regardless. When their holidays come around, they're going to let you know their holidays are coming around. They're not going to be ashamed or afraid to let you know of their culture. So we should not be bottling our culture in. That's right. When the Most High has taught us through these words that he said that we are a people unto him. And earlier said that we are a holy people unto him. A separate people. People that are of distinction before him Amen. and before the world. Amen. So carry yourself as such. It doesn't mean you walk with your head or your nose up. Because you also have to make sure that other people receive this information as well. But make sure that you carry yourself with distinction all throughout the week. Continue. Oh, yeah. 
And Prophet Moshe charged the people at the 11th verse the same day, saying, Ye shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are passed over the Jordan, Shimon and Levi and Yehuda and Issachar and Yosef and Benjamin. And ye shall stand upon Mount Ebal for the curse, Reuven, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Don, and Naphtali. So what's happening is there's going to be the procedure where there's going to be two mountain ranges, one called Abel, one called Gerizim. Abel, as we read earlier, was where they set up the altar for the burnt offering and where they wrote the law of the Most High God plainly for everybody to read and understand and they rejoice before the Most High. But also part of this procedure, the tribes of Israel are going to be split into six. Six on one mountain range, six on the other mountain range. And it's you know just interesting that the ones that are pronouncing the, the curses are on the same mountain where the altar and the burnt offerings are. And then on the other side, you have the six tribes that are blessing the people. Mm -hmm. And also, and it's worth noting, we, you know, we've mentioned it all the time, but it's worth noting that you can tell who is from what tribe based on how they speak. Okay. You have six tribes that bless the people and six tribes that curse the people. Mm -hmm. So even today, if you have people that are always talking bad about people, they might be one of those six tribes that are always cursing the people. Just look at the, just look at the six that are cursing the people. Mm -hmm. They might be of that six. So, they have books in front of them. So if, if, you, if, if you hear people that are always blessing the people, talking good, trying to uplift people, they might be from that six that is, that is talking about blessing the people. Amen. So that may be a way. Don't worry about Genesis 49. This might be able to tell who's from what tribe, Amen. who's blessing and who's cursing people based Amen. on that. This is no, none of our words. This is what's written here. It's written here. And what we say, we read on the line, not between the line. Because between the line is only nothing but white space. Continue. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh a graven a molded image, an abomination unto Jehovah, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and set it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. amen. So these are things that are being, the curses that are going to be pronounced, and the people are going to have to say amen to this. So this first one is idolatry. That Jehovah God considers an abomination mm -hmm. in his sight. This is not something to be taken lightly. The word abomination doesn't appear but so many times within the scripture. It appears with idolatry. It appears with homosexuality. Mm -hmm. It appears with men dressed like women and women dressed like men. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that the Most High considers abomination. So when you see that word come in, we have to be very careful of how we maneuver these type of things. But the Most High said that, Cursed be he who sets up um, even a molten image, which is an abomination unto him. Continue. Cursed be he that dishonoreth his father or his mother, and all the people shall say. Amen. So we have to be careful of how we treat parents. We also have to be Amen. careful of how we watch and allow other to others to treat their parents. Amen. That we can't see people dishonoring their parents and just think that it's, that it's going to go away. Because mm -hmm. as these words are being professed, and as people are saying, I meant it, that means that these words are in effect. Amen. So those that curse their parents, or those that dishonor their parents in any shape, manner, or form will be cursed. Mm -hmm. And that's why the people say, I meant because they have to acknowledge that. So we have to be careful how we treat our parents. In Leviticus chapter 19, it says, fear everyone, his father and his mother. That's right. In Exodus chapter 20, it says, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long. That's right. So if you want to live long, we hear prayers where people live until one. So 103 is not something that is impossible to live to today. So if you want to live long, you honor your parents. Amen. Continue. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say. Amen. Amen. And that may seem simple. Just because it is stealing, but the Most High puts it in, in, a, in the line of curses that happen, moving somebody's landmark to increase your property and to diminish their property. Cursed be the individual. Because these are things that we, that people do in secret as well. Continue. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to go astray in the way, and all the people shall say. Amen. So we have to make sure that we're directing people in the right path. If you're causing people to go astray, you're causing the blind, those that are not able to make their own way in life, and you're causing them to go astray, then cursed be you. Then most I will probably find, an, or he can find another way for that individual to get on track, but you who direct them away, the most high, will curse you as a result of that. Continue. Cursed be he that perverteth the justice due to the stranger, the fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say. Amen. So justice is something that is very important. Amen. Just to spend a little bit, it's very important when, it, when being in the seat of judgment, judgment is done correctly. Judgment is done properly. 
judgment is done regardless of who the individuals are before the judges. But judges is based on what actions were taking place and to make sure that the righteous are vindicated and the wicked are punished. And you see many people today, and unfortunately many of our people, have been on the other end of the injustice. And as we get into the next chapter, we're going to see this is part of the reason why many of us are going through this injustice. But even though we see it and we're living and we have been living in a time of, you know, through injustice, the Most High has and will continue to curse those who perform injustice. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just unfortunate that we are on the other end of that, just like t today is the 20th on, the, on September. On the 24th, I believe today is the 20th. 20th today is the 21st. So on the 24th of September, there's a man named Marcellus Williams who is scheduled to be put to death for a crime that has been, that has been proven he did not do based on DNA, DNA and who the prosecutors also said did not do the crime based on DNA evidence and also proven that the witnesses testified falsely against him. But then you have people that are judges that, that are still keeping that going. So curse be those that perform any type of injustice. But again, unfortunately, we end up being the ones on the other end of that injustice. Mm -hmm. Continue. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he have uncovered his father's skirt. And all the people shall say. Amen. So that's, yeah, that's adultery. The father's wife, which is just even extra, mm -hmm. just extra freaky. Uh, they would say, you're a fan, you're a fan, you're a fan, if you're going to be doing something like that. But adultery, as I mentioned earlier, adultery is something that is prominent and prevalent just in the world period. But even amongst, as unfortunately, amongst our own people, we are the ones that promote adultery more than anybody else. Where a majority of the songs speak about adultery, like they, they mute curses out of songs because of the radio. But if they were to mute the, the sins, most of these songs wouldn't even get, get played. Like Cash Cobain, he makes some nice music, but he's always talking about sleeping with somebody else's woman if you can understand what he's saying, number one. But when you actually understand what he's saying, he's talking about, you know, that's your girl, that's not a problem. That's somebody else's girl. And he's singing these songs, and you have all these songs that are out there today. You have the other one, you know, you're gonna give it up right now. She said, but you know I got a man. But you're gonna give it up. So now you're forcing, you're forcing yourself on somebody, why not? You're forcing yourself on somebody else's woman. So again, we promote, Unfortunately, adultery and various other crimes that the Most High considers abominations, and you be cursed for doing so. Continue. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say. Amen. If we need an explanation for that, then we really have gone astray. Yeah. So can we move on? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> we don't need to describe that act, do we? No. Or how abominable that is, no. and that, how that practice is. And how it's sick, and how stuff like that caused gonorrhea to exist. Well, so we don't need to go into that, right? Okay, so, okay. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say. Amen. Which we know is incest. The Most High says we're not supposed to be doing that. Some of these things are also reiterated, or have been reiterated from Leviticus chapter 19, no, Leviticus chapter 18, and Leviticus chapter 20. Continue. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say. That's, a, that's another fan right there. That's a fan. That's a fan. <laughs> if you don't know what fan is, ask somebody after Shabbat what a fan is. It's not what you cool, it's not what you cool yourself for. Cursed be he that smite up his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say. And that's murder, yeah. or red rum, red rum. These are the songs that we talk about today. All we know is red rum. But the Most High said, cursed be he who does red rum. If you don't know what that is, ask somebody after Shabbat again. <laughs> ask Chief Saw, He's, he knows all this stuff. The music, <laughs> not that he knows all the music. <laughs> cursed be he that taketh a bribe to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, and these are judges, again, that are in the seat of power that are taking this money or whatever it is to cause, and as you just mentioned, they were not just Marcellus Willis, but many of our people on death, many people in general, not just to, we're talking about our people, of course, but there's many people on death row that are, they're unjustified. There's many people that have been put to death 
unjustified for things that, that crimes that they have not done. There was, we could get into that later on, but there's many people that, that's why you have stuff like the Innocent Project and they have to work hard because this, especially in a time where you can use, utilize DNA and then you have cameras and other type of thing, we could trace things. There's many people who are innocent of crimes that they have been convicted of. But the most I said, cursed be those who have taken the bribe to slay the innocent person. These are the people that are, that are in the seats of judgment that are using their influence in order to, in, to slay innocent people. Continue. Salak Lee, Yisrael, I skipped the 24th verse. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say. Amen. Amen. Now you, read, you actually did read that one. Okay. That's when we spoke about Red Rum. Cursed be he that confirmeth not the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say. Amen. So if you thought you were clear from all of these up, these things right here, it says you don't know, have to confirm all of the words because Moses already reiterated all of the commandments throughout, throughout, throughout the book of Deuteronomy that the children of Israel are supposed to be keeping. So you get to this point and you didn't confirm any of it, then cursed be you who has not confirmed all of the words of these laws. Continue. 20th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hawk diligently unto the voice of Jehovah thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Jehovah thy God will set thee up on high above all the nations of the earth. And that's why it was important for us to read in the book of Deuteronomy from the beginning to know who Moses is speaking to. Because within this chapter, we, if we don't read, we know it. Based on that, he's talking about the children of Israel. But just so that we can have that separation in our mind to know who he's speaking, Moses is speaking about the children of Israel. So he says that when they hearken diligently into the voice of Jehovah, thy God, to observe all his commandments, again, not just some, not just most, but you have to perform all. And even people today will say, well, you don't do offerings. The fact that we don't do offerings is keeping the commandments because we're not supposed to do offerings outside of the land and outside of the place that Jehovah God said they're supposed to be done. Amen. So we're still keeping all of the commandments. Amen. Some people try to be slick when they say you're not doing everything. Yeah. When they reason, but there's a reason why, and that's the reason why. So we're keeping, and he says that he will set them high above all nations upon the earth. Amen. So when we are doing right, when we're living good, we're going to be high above everybody else upon the face of the earth. And then we're going to read a few more verses of these blessings that the Most High said that he's going to give to the children of Israel as a result of hearkening to his voice. Continue. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Jehovah thy God. So that blessings overtaking, meaning that they're going to chase you. How many people want to be chased by a blessing? So if you want to be chased by a blessing, you have to hawk into the word of the Most High. It's, a, it's not just you just get chased by blessings because you, you exist. There's something that you have to do. Right. So the Most High said, and remember, Most High, when he speaks, it will be done. So he says, if you hawk into his voice and do all his commandments, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And it says again, if you hawk unto the voice. So again, it's reiterating all the time. Keep the commandments and listen to the voice of your God. Continue. Blessed shall I be in the city, and blessed shall I be in the field. Blessed shall I be to be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the young of thy flock. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy kneading trough. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. And that kept that voice, that verse, and cast everything. No matter where you go, you're going to be blessed. Many people around the world, many people in various congregations and churches read these blessings and think that they're just automatic. But again, these only come by hearkening to the voice of the Most High God. So when any, anybody's ever delivering these words here about the blessings that they're going to receive based on Deuteronomy 28, you have to be able to reiterate, reiterate to them, it comes with keeping the commands of God. Mm -hmm. So these blessings are not going to overtake us if we're profaning the Sabbath day and not keeping it holy. Right. It's not going to chase us by working on the Sabbath day. It's not going to chase us by, again, by bowing out to false gods and bowing out to images, disrespecting our parents, you know, stealing, lying, which is also in the Levit Leviticus chapter 19, eating unclean food. We have to be careful of the things that we do because then it will cause the curses to come upon us. But again, the blessings are automatic if we do everything. Continue. Jehovah shall cause thy enemies at the seventh verse that rise up against thee to be smitten before thee. 
they shall come out against thee one way and shall flee thee, flee before thee seven ways. Jehovah shall command the blessing with thee in thy bonds and in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. And he will bless thee in the land which Jehovah thy God giveth thee. So in verse 8, it says, Jehovah will command the blessing. So blessings will chase us and blessings will be commanded to come upon us. And the only entities that break commands of God are human beings. So if God is commanding a blessing upon us, the, the blessing is not going to disobey God. So once you do the right thing in the sight of the Most High and do what's good in his sight, mm -hmm. he has commanded these blessings will come upon you. Continue. Jehovah will establish thee for a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of Jehovah thy God and walk in his way. And these conditions are always thrown in there. These, it's not just say you will get this, you will get that. But every now and then, it's, it's thrown in there if you follow, if you follow, if you follow, if you listen, if you hawk, and if you do it. It's, it's, it's something that we have to do. Again, because you woke up in the morning, blessings are not going to overcome you or chase you down. Mm -hmm. There's some actions that we have to do. There's some obedience that we have to display. And it says here, again, because we don't read the name of Israel within this chapter thus far, we know that he's talking to Israel based on what we read before. So when he said that he, you will be a holy people, he's talking to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So the children of Israel have to be able to identify themselves based on the blessing. Right. Today in 2024, the children of Israel unfortunately identify themselves based on the punishment and the curses. Right. But that's not how the Most High wants the children of Israel to be identified by. Right. It's supposed to be identification by the blessings. Amen. That when you step on any arena, when you step in any field, that you excel and you do better than everybody else. Yeah. So you go into the Olympics and you're doing better than everybody else because the Most High has blessed you. And then when you have countries that don't have enough of us, they're not winning enough gold medals. But when you have countries that have plenty of Israelites amongst them and have plenty of Israelites you know, on the field for them, they're going to get a lot of gold medals and a lot of silver medals and so many medals that they had to take away medals from some people. Continue. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that Jehovah's name that the name of Yehoah, Salakli, is called upon thee, and they shall be afraid of thee. So imagine that people want respect, people want fear, but they want to do so with um, force, intimidation, gun violence, mm -hmm. knife violence, mm -hmm. harsh speech. But Mo the Most High said that the fear of you would be in other people just by following his word. So, and he, as it says also in that verse, he said, they will see that the name of Jehovah is called upon you. Amen. So we probably can't even imagine what that's like to have the name of Jehovah called upon us. Amen. But just the verse alone is profound. profound. But to be able to walk the street and people will say, see that the name of Jehovah God that created the heavens and the earth is within you. is a very profound and powerful statement. and something that we should internalize and think about. Right, not take lightly and think about the fact that the one that is in control of all things, the one that we do not see and who no one can see, mm -hmm. will be afraid of you because you're following the commands of the Most High. Amen. So again, there's no reason for us to not be strict and meticulous in how we keep the commandments of God, how we conduct ourselves when we go to work and when we go to school, when we make our separation from other people and not involve ourselves in the folly of the world. Because again, the Most High has blessings that can chase us that will overcome any ridicule that you can think of that can happen from somebody else. Continue. And Jehovah will make thee overabundant for good at the 11th verse, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, and, the fruit of, and in the land which Jehovah swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Jehovah will open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain of thy land in its season and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. So Israel is supposed to be the banks. The World Bank is supposed to be the children of Israel. Amen. And then God said he will open up to thee his good treasure. God is in control of the universe. So if he's giving you good treasure, that platinum chain in the back is nothing compared to what the Most High can give us. He has good treasure for us. Just follow the state, just follow the, all of the command. Not some, not most, but all. And these command and these blessings will overtake you, and they will be commanded upon you, and the most high will open up the good treasure of the heavens. 
And again, even as we read through all of, all of this and we read the blessing of Abraham, money is not part of that blessing. What people back then and we, we, what we should be focusing today are good lives, healthy lives, good families, good children, peace, food. These are the things that were very important to people back then. Because you can have all the money, but if the rain is not nourishing that ground, you're going to be hungry. And unless you're making gold cake, you're going to be hungry with all the gold that you have. All the paper money, unless you're going to use it for fuel and you find some food somewhere, that money's not going to do anything for you. You can have $2 billion in cryptocurrency. If you're hungry, you're hungry. All they can do is cash out you some more money, but they can't cash out you some food. Because when you're hungry, you're going to want some food. That's what you be look, should be looking forward to. And again, you're going to lend to many, and you're not going to be borrowed. Continue. And Jehovah will make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of Jehovah thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve So everything them. that we read within the first five books has to be done in compliance. That's how we receive everything that we, are, that we read about right here. That everything that's commanded, that it, we will be a blessing, we will be above, we will not be beneath. All these things will come if we hearken to the voice of the Most High God. And that list of blessings only took 14 verses to give, but yet many of us were happy just reading those 14 verses. Because those 14 verses could make us very happy. Because again, you have peace. Number one, many people are just looking for peace today. Looking for peace of mind, peace, you know, peace within their household, peace within their families. People are just looking for, again, to be fed, to be well taken care of, to have clothing. These are the things that the essentials of life the Most High will bless us with if, as it says repeatedly, thou hark into the commandments of the Most High. But on the flip side, the Most High doesn't give 14 verses of punishments when it comes to not listening to him, because we have to hear exactly what's going to be done to us if we turn aside from the way that Most High has commanded us. So the chapter doesn't end in 28, as it could have. So we don't get 14 verses of punishments and 14 verses of cursings. We go all the way to verse 68. Continue. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hawk into the voice of Jehovah thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy kneading trough. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the young of thy flock. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall be when thou goest out. So the most I just reversed everything that was just said, oh, yes. but then wait, there's more. <laughs> but again, if we want a blessing, we know what to do. Okay. If you want a cursing, you know what to do. Yeah. And you're about to find out. What's gonna, no, you're gonna about to find out what's going to happen yeah. if you don't do what you're supposed to be doing. And these things happen if you don't, if you don't listen. Again, this is speaking specifically to the children of Israel. Yeah. So when the children of Israel don't hark into all of the, the don't hark into the voice of Jehovah God and do not keep all the commandments of Jehovah God, then these are the things that will happen to the children of Israel. These are not the things that are going to happen to the world for disobedience. These are the things that are going to happen to the children of Israel for disobedience. People get punished for the wrong that they do, but this chapter is specifically talking what's going to happen when the children of Israel do good and when they do evil. Continue. Jehovah will send upon thee cursing, discomfort, and rebuke in all that thou puttest thy hand unto to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the evil of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. So by doing evil, we forsake Jehovah God, and he caused the works of our hands to be destroyed. With pride, he said that he will bless the works of our hands, yeah. and allow us, he said in verse 12, Jehovah will open up to thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain of thy land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. So the blessing come, you go to work and you're the best employee, meaning that people acknowledge you for the work that you do. 
you go to school and you're excelling, you're getting A's, you know, you're making your parents proud, they feel good about you. But when you don't hearken the voice of the Most High God, you go to work, you're a lazy employee, they want to fire you, you want to get, they're going to want to lay you off. You know, you go to school and you bring it home bad report cards and mm -hmm. even when you're trying to do a, write a nice report, it ends up being a failure. Right. Because you're not doing what the Most High commanded you to do. So therefore, he's cursing all the works of your hands. You use ChatGPT and you still get a failure on the paper that ChatGPT wrote for you. Wow. Because the Most High is, is cursing the works of your hands and the uh, works of AI that you're using to get that work done. So you're not going to be successful in anything that you do because you turn away from the voice of the Most High. Continue. Jehovah will make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land. Whether thou goest in to possess So these pestilence attach themselves unto us, whether it's the insects, whether it's the mice, whether it's the mosquitoes, whether it's the bees, whatever it is, the Most High is causing all these things to cleave unto us. Continue. Jehovah will smite thee with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with fiery heat and with drought and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. So we were supposed to be pursued by the blessings but we're being pursued by inflammation. Well, fever first, or cons actually consumption. Yeah. We're being eaten up physically, internally and externally. Yeah. Fever, you know, your, your pressure is high. Uh -huh. Inflammation, you have arthritis, you have pain, mm -hmm. or, you know, you have pain. That fiery heat, you have those um, heat strokes or things like that, or right. hot flashes. Uh, right. Some people may not know about the hot flashes, and it could be 30 degrees outside, and they want to turn the AC on because of the hot flashes and the drought and the blasting and the mill, all these things the Most High said will pursue us. <laughs> this was a general, see, those that, are under, those that are under 20 don't know that you got hot flashes, so they don't know that you have, you just, Okay, we, you, you, want, you, want to, you, want to, you want to finish? <laughs> you, you, you can continue. <laughs> so, so at what age do y'all get hot flashes then? Okay. I didn't mention menopause. I just said hot flashes. It could just be coming from having a bad attitude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. So when the heavens is brass, it just means that all you see is sunlight. No rain. When the ground is iron, it's hard. Nothing's going to grow out of that because there's no rain. So either way, and it says this, because of that, continue the next verse. Jehovah will make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee, until thou be destroyed. Mm -hmm. will cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and shall flee seven ways before them. And thou shalt be a horror unto all the kingdoms of the earth. So where people were afraid of the children of Israel because the name of Jehovah God was within them, they're just afraid of the children of Israel, period. So police can go to somebody's house, in their own house, and kill them because they call you know because they just they or they claim they was warming up something but they get killed in their own house so please become afraid of the children of Israel because of the curses that come upon them where police and people in general are just quick to draw and shoot shoot randomly shoot everybody because they're afraid of the children of Israel and not because the name of Jehovah God is within them so these are the punishments that the Most High said would come upon us as a result of that, and where it would only take one person to chase seven. Yeah. And one, one come, and everybody scatters. Same way as it came, you know, you might have had one boatload of, boatload of people able to carry, or a few boatloads of people carrying millions yeah. across the Atlantic for decades. Continue. And thy carcasses shall be food unto all the fowls of the air, mm -hmm. unto all the beasts of the earth, and there shall be none to frighten them away. Because only Jehovah God can frighten people or frighten, frighten beasts away. But when that protection is taken away from us, he leaves us open to everything that's going to come against us. So where you 
human is supposed to be have dominion over the beast. Now, people are afraid of dogs. You're running from pit bulls. You're running from mice. You're running from lions. You're running from tigers, you're running from bears, you're running from everything where you're supposed to be able to just walk amongst them and they run from you. You have a water bug, everything. People have, you know, we become afraid of today because that protection that the Most High gave the children of Israel is now taken away. Continue. Yehoah will smite thee with the boil of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch. Whereas thou cannot be healed. So we're going to have sicknesses come upon us that we're not going to be healed from. And it's going to continue to talk about these sicknesses as we go along. But the Mosai, and this again, this is not going to happen to just one individual. But these punishments are happening to a group of people. So when you see a group of people with all these things happening upon them, then you realize, and unfortunately, because they did not hark to the voice of the Most High, because of the covenant that they were supposed to be living in. But if they were hawking under the covenant that Most High gave, then they will receive everything from verses 1 through 14. But now, the children of Israel are receiving what's in 15 to 68 in some books and 69 in other books. And it mentions the board of Egypt, all of the diseases of Egypt that the Most, the most High said would not, happen to, would not come upon the children of Israel and not happening. Diseases of Egypt such as tuber tu tuberculosis, polio, and the various other things that were happening in Egypt are now happening to the children of Israel in record numbers today. Continue. Yehovah will smite thee with madness and with blindness and with astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not make thy ways prosperous. And thou shalt be only oppressed and robbed always. And there shall be none to save thee. Because there is none that can save us. Because Yehovah God is the only savior. So if the children of Israel are not following the true Savior, there's no one else that can save. So no matter what gods you may call upon for salvation, they're not going to save. Because the Most High Jehovah God take that, took that uh, protection off. And when it comes to this, these verses that we just read, we know mental health is a crisis around the world. But amongst our own people, there's, you know, and the, we're few in number, but yet the cases of these things are so high. We're... We are out there groping, and it, be, it could be groping because of drugs. Yeah. It could be groping because of stress. Yeah. It could be groping because of various other things. Traumas. But the traumas and everything that happens, the Most High said that these, these are the results of iniquities and sins. Yeah. Now, of course, on a human level, there are going to be things such as drugs, the trauma, the stress that cause these things to happen. Okay. But the end result is that amongst the children of Israel, there's going to be madness and blindness okay. and that astonishment of heart. Groping people in noonday just walking around the street as though it's nighttime. And then if you think at nighttime, you just see all types of people come out. If you, if you, if you just happen to be out in the streets at night, and we don't encourage people to travel at night if, you ha if you're not going to work or if you're not doing night school or anything like that. But if you just happen to be out at night, you're going to see people that you want. Where do they live during the day? Because they just come out of nowhere. And we have to Think of it again. This is the punishment that the Most High gave to the children of Israel. So where many of us may think that we're sane, we can't ridicule, ridicule those who are not sane. Because again, we are all in the same punishment together. Where we might not receive that, we might receive something else. Continue. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not use the fruit thereof. So we, again, as we spoke earlier, you have a woman, and she's not your woman. This is something that plagues, of course, many nations. But, but again, amongst the children of Israel, this is something that's promoted. Against all what we talk, you know, consider today, you know, whether you're listening to hip hop, whether you're listening to R&B, whether you're listening to Afro beats, and they're speaking in their language, it's somebody else's woman that they're speaking about. And this is what is promoted, along with the violence. Where other people, other cultures, of course, the violence is going to be more in numbers because there's more of them in numbers than the children of Israel. But when they put out music, they're not promoting in record numbers the violence and the adultery that those that are, have small numbers are doing in their music. And of course, it, it's either the life is imitating art or art imitating life. But you also have to look at it as these are the end results of things. You have to look at the people that are pushing this music forward. Those that are promoting the violence and promoting the adultery and promoting the various things that happen today. 
those that are in control of their, their radios, in control of the record label. Those are the ones that are promoting it to our own people. They're promoting it to our people. And those that may want to do wholesome and righteous music, they're not going to get the promotion. They're not going to get the big budget. But those that are promoting the degradation and everything, drug, including drug use, drug use, violence, adultery, those that, that want to push that in their music, they're going to get the funding. They're going to get the sign. They're going to get signed to the biggest labels. Where if you're trying to put something righteous, you might have to do the independent route. And you're not going to get that budget, you know, that you're going to, that those that have, again, and you, you see it coming more and more. And even today's time, you have even more female hip-hop artists more on the forefront as well. The most I said that in Jeremiah that a woman will court a man, and you see the biggest hip-hop artists today are the female artists. And the, they're actually rapping better than the males today. But the, what they're promoting is not what we need to be hearing. Right. She don't need a light skin with a fade and a dark skin with, with dreads. And that's what, that's what it comes... <laughs> he knows the lyrics, too. <laughs> Continue. Thine ox shall be slain before thee. That was actually Glorilla, not... Um, he sang Sexy Red. And thou red. shall not eat thereof. Thy ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt have none to save thee. So everything that we work hard for, the Most High said that he's going to tear it down and take it away from us. So again, these, this things, these things happen because we didn't hark to the voice of the Most High God. And again, these are things that are happening collectively to the, to the children of Israel. Many people come into this way of life by reading this chapter. Many people unfortunately come to this way of life reading this chapter, reading about the punishments, as opposed to reading the blessings. We're supposed to be at the stage in our lives where we read the first 14 verses and say, oh, well, I'm, the ch I'm a child of Israel because I, I do have these blessings overtaking me, as opposed to curses overtaking us, as opposed to drugs and violence and everything in our community. We're supposed to be having blessed communities, blessed congregations where people are coming together, working together to make things work. Continue. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and frail with longing for them all the day, and there shall be none in the power of thy hand. And that was repeated. It's the third time. There's no one to save, no one to save, and there's no power in our hand to deliver us from those that are taking our sons and our daughters away from us. So when we think about slavery and we think about people who have, taken, have had their sons taken away from them, you only think about, unfortunately, who they call today the African-American or the Caribbean that came into this side of the world because they had their children taken away from them. But as it says, there will be more. Because the Most High it just wants us to see to our face what's going to happen to us and what has happened to us as a result of disobedience. Continue. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. So, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. They knew about Egypt. They knew about Aram and Assyria. They knew about, the, you know, Babylon was around somewhere. They knew about Assyria. They knew about all these, they didn't know about the United States. They didn't know about, even before, they didn't know about Portugal, which was the start of the slave trade. They didn't know about Spain. They didn't know about England. They didn't know about the nether, the nether. They didn't know about all these places which are responsible for this. So when Moses says that the fruit of our land and, and our labors sh shall go to a nation that we, that we know not, it's speaking about what's happening to the children of Israel today in various places being scattered throughout the earth by the hand of nations that were not known back then. Continue. Jehovah will smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore boil, whereas thou canst not be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the crown of thy head. So more sicknesses are coming to the children of Israel. Again, that information that was mentioned before, again, being, smoke, being smitten in the knees and in the legs, having boils, and that we cannot be healed. You can go to the, we should, we'll sp speak about that, um, Tom, but we'll speak about that, but we're supposed to be going to the doctor regularly. But the Most High says he's going to strike us with things that we cannot be healed from. Continue. Jehovah will crown. Jehovah will bring thee in thy king, whom thou shalt set over thee unto a nation that thou hast not known. Thou nor thy fathers, and there thou shalt serve other gods with a small g, wood and stone. And thou shalt become an astonishment 
a proverb and a byword among all the peoples where the Yehoah shall lead thee away. So when we think about who was taken from one place by a nation they knew not, the unfortunate identification card would be those that endured, could again endured, the uh, transatlantic slave trade. And going from one nation being taken by people that they knew not, because again, the children of Israel knew about all these nations around about at this time, but they didn't know about the nations that were part of the slave trade, which occurred generations after, and would not have occurred had the children of Israel hearkened to the voice of the Most High God. Again, these are all the results of disobedience. So as a result of the, dis if slavery is a result of, this is another thing, we might can mention now, slavery is a result of disobedience to the Most High God. Therefore, we should not be seeking payment and money for the punishment because of what we did in the sight of the Most High God. Yeah, people want reparations, but we sinned against God, and we want to get paid for it. Right. We are getting paid for it, right. but not the way, but people want monetary payment. Right. When again, the problem came because of us and the breaking the covenant of Most High God. Mm -hmm. So we have something to, to yeah, there's the reparations have to be us repairing the breach we made with us and the Most High God. Then the Most High God would take care of everything else that we would read about when we get to Deuteronomy chapter 30 next week. Then that would be the repairing that would take place. Continue. Oh, it would mention that you should be an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the peoples whether Jehovah shall lead thee away. So the children of Israel will no longer be known as the children of Israel. Right. I believe it was Rich Lowry who slipped up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Certain words that you know, we, we won't say today, but he slipped up. If you just look at his name, I think it's Lowry's the last name, a Republican. Um, right. He was talking about the Haitians. Right. And he said, he said these Haitian, oh yeah, he, might say, he said the Haitian and, he's, oh no, Haitian migrants. Right. M and N are two different, yeah. <laughs> two, yeah, two, two different words. But these are the words that become attached, colored, yeah. black, yeah. Yeah. even African-American, you know, Afro-American, Caribbean. And I encourage people to actually look up the origin of the word Caribbean to see what that word actually means. Right. Because these are all words that were put upon us that we take claim to but the origins of them are not something to be proud of. And the astonishment, the proud, even dealing with that situation where they'll say that they eat cats and dogs and all types, these would be the astonishment and the things that would be put upon the children of Israel because of disobedience. Continue. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shalt gather little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy borders, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olives shall drop off. So when you do decide to get, get something and decide to plan and do a little work, it's not going to be successful. And even as I said earlier, you betroth a wife, another man will sleep with her. You build a house, someone else is going to dwell in it. You plant a vineyard, someone else is going to eat the fruit. Those are the same three things that would allow an individual to get out of war. Yeah. By saying, you know, you're newly married, you just planted a vineyard and just built a house. Right. We read it early and do the right. You can get out of war for that. Right. But the most I saying, you won't have an opportunity to enjoy anything yeah. that he has given you. And that's why it repeats here in this verse. Just, you're going to plant, and you're not going to be able to enjoy it. But this, but this is what's going to happen. Teach. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but they shall not be thine. For they shall go into captivity. As I said earlier, our sons and our daughters will go away into captivity. So we're supposed to, as you know, we read, be fruitful and multiply. That's the blessing the Most High has given to humanity and amongst the children of Israel, being able to have children. Amen. But the unfortunate part of that, due to disobedience, yeah. mm -hmm. the children will not become the children of the parents. Right. They become the children of other nations right. via captivity. And even within captivity, they become wards of the state. Yeah. Whether in school and they're being taught the ways of other nations, right. whether ACS comes and takes them anyway, oh, yeah. whether you have the, the school to prison pipeline that's going to take them to prison anyway, right. the children you have end up not being yours because of the disobedience of the children of Israel. Oh, yeah. So the captivity would come in one way or the other. So it's, you know, this is not just a chapter about slavery and the translated slaves. Every aspect of the captivity and the punishment is being read here. Continue. <coughs> All thy trees, at the 42nd verse, and the fruit of thy land shall the locust possess. Okay. The stranger that is in the midst of thee shall mount up above thee higher and higher, 
and thou shalt come down lower and lower. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So all of these things are reverses of what we read early in the first 14 verses, where the children of Israel are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Now the children of Israel are the tail instead of being the head, and where other nations are rising higher and higher above the children of Israel, and the children of Israel are being looked down lower and lower amongst all of the nations that they're being scattered into. And again, as it mentions that the sons and daughters were going to captivity, that no matter, you know, you're going to have a young child, young as Emmett Till, young as um, just a recent case, um, Javian McGee, who was found by a tree with a rope around his neck. Right. These are things that happened in 2024. Right. So all the things that we read... and. The unfortunate thing is that many people want to forget about slavery. They don't like seeing, of course, you don't want to see it per se. People don't like seeing so much slavery films and read about slavery. But everybody else remembers their past. Oh, yeah. Everyone. The U.S. remembers the Alamo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They remember 9-11. Right. The Jewish people are going to remember October 7th next month. Right. They remember the Holocaust. But everybody wants us to forget everything that happened to us. So we're not trying to remember these things so that we can be sad about it, but, but we also want to remember these things to know that these things are not supposed to be happening to us. Right. And should not be ha and how we get out of, the, out of these things about turning to the most high God. Yeah. So we won't be having, we won't be losing children in the streets through gun violence. Because again, the gun violence is not just cops against our people. It's us against us as well. Yeah. Again, these are the things that are also promoted in the music. Continue. And all these curses at the 45th verse shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou didst not hearken unto the voice of Jehovah thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded. And the reminder is there because we did not hearken to the voice of the Most High God, whereas the blessings are supposed to overtake us and chase us. Now the curses will pursue us and overtake us until we are destroyed. And then it says in this verse. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou didst not serve Jehovah thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart by reason of the abundance of all things. So we're supposed to be happy when we serve the Most High God. So we're supposed to serve him with that abundance and that joy that, that he gives us. And it goes on to say this. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemy whom Jehovah shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in the want and in nakedness and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed. And it mentioned thee. earlier that the previous verse that these will be a sign and a wonder upon the children of Israel and their seed forever because they did not serve Jehovah their God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Mm -hmm. So we also have the sign of being hungry, being thirsty, and being naked, and the one of all things, and having a yoke of iron upon our neck until we are destroyed. So when you look up images of the slave and you see all types of yokes of irons that, you know, we've done this in the past where we had the pictures and stuff. The pictures are in the other room if anybody wants to see them. But there's all types of yokes of irons that was put upon the children of Israel. And again, that is the sign, unfortunately, of who we are because of disobedience, which is continuing to be repeated here within this chapter. Continue. Jehovah will bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as the vulture swoop it down, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce continents that shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So coming, so a nation will come from far away, whether it started with Portugal, mm -hmm. Spain, right. England, eventually the United States, and all those people that were involved that had languages that the children of Israel did not know about this at this time. Right. And they come as fast as the vulture or as the symbol of many of these countries being the vulture or the eagle. The Most High has shown us, us this imagery and these symbols all throughout this because he said that this, these punishments will be a sign unto us forever. So this nation will come from far and take us into captivity because, again, because we didn't hearken to the voice of the Most High God. And they don't have regard for the person of the old or show favor to the young. So regardless of your age, they don't have a problem killing you or murdering you by any right. means necessary. That's right. Continue. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy ground until thou be destroyed, that also shall not leave thee corn, wine, or oil, the increase of thy kind, or the young of thy flock, until he have caused thee to perish. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fortified walls come down, wherein thou didst trust throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, 
which Jehovah thy God have given thee. And the teaching of here continues that there's none that's going to save us. There's none in the power of our hands. That if we think that we can build up four to five walls to save us, the most high God said that they will be broken down. So whether it's back then or today, anything that we put our trust in beside you, Jehovah God, he will tear that down and allow us to be vulnerable to all of our enemies. Continue. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, whom Jehovah thy God have given thee in the siege and in the strengthness wherein thy enemies shall strengthen thee. So because of that siege, because of the famine, because of the hunger, people who are very considerate of their children are now eating their children. And we're going to see examples of that in these next few verses. The man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil against his brother and against the wife of his bosom and against the remnant of his children whom he have remaining. So we see that selfishness is a punishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being selfish and not caring about other people is a result of disobedience to the Most High. Continue. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he have nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall straighten thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you who would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil against the husband of her bosom and against her son and against her daughter and against her afterbirth that cometh out from between her feet and against the children whom she shall bear, for she shall eat them for the want of all things secretly in the siege and in the strengthness wherewith thy enemies shall strengthen thee in thy gate. So you have parents now that don't care about their children, that they're only thinking about themselves because of the stress and being straightened because of the siege, because of the stress and the traumas that are happening, they don't, again, they don't care about their own children. And they even got to the point as, you know, where men, where it's projected that men leave the household, which is not actually statistically correct. But you have it projected that men leave in the household and you have also women that amongst the children of Israel now, in numbers, the abortion rates is not compared to other nations. But with the, the little amount of African Americans, you know, so to speak, in America, the abortion rate amongst African American women shouldn't be so high. That's the lack of concern that people have for their children because of the stress and the trauma that are happening roundabout. Continue. If thou wilt not to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and awful name, Jehovah thy God, then Jehovah will make thy plagues wonderful and thy plagues and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. And he sh will bring back upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou was in dread of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law, then will Jehovah bring upon thee until thou be so destroyed. So the previous sicknesses we spoke about, what will happen to the children of Israel, then even new sicknesses that were not known back then and not written in the book where it happened. So that's why, again, in record numbers compared to everybody else in the world, when you look at statistically the African American or the black people in America are statistically high in diabetes, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. asthma. Uh, Failure. Heart failure. All these diseases are attached to the, to the children of Israel or to the, you know, based on what we read, or to black Americans in record numbers compared to everybody else. And there's no, there's no salvation from it. That it just seemingly attaches itself to us. And where everybody else may be able to work through certain things and get cured or the numbers may not be the same way, amongst the children of Israel, these numbers are very high. But even along with that, it's a very important and very imperative that we do see the doctor anyway. Don't think that, you know, hide it from the doctor is going to save you. You want to you go to the doctor. You want to go to good doctors. And you don't want to just rely on your doctors. You want to also rely on specialists. Mm -hmm. That's one thing your doctor may not be, because you may, you may go for a checkup and they check your blood pressure and they do some blood work, but it doesn't end there. You need to see other people. Okay. So that's part of it so you can know exactly what's going on. Right. That's why amongst women, they don't just rely on their doctor. They go to the OBGYN also. So amongst men and women, you have to see other people. You might have to see the gastroenterologist. You might have to see the oncologist. You might have to see the hematologist because your doctor is not going to be able to know. Your doctor actually does not know everything. In general, general, they just know certain stuff. They might tell you that you have anemia and you don't have anemia. 
Because they tell many black people they have anemia, and there's another something we could talk about. There's something that black people have that is not anemia, but when they look at your blood work, they'll say that your iron is low, so they diagnose you with anemia when you actually do not have anemia. There's a certain trait, along with sickle cell, that is along with black people. Actually, you might as well say, because you have sickle cell, you have um, thalassemia, which is something that black people have, and that's why our iron numbers are low, and your doctor may not be, know that. You need to see other specialists to tell you those things. Continue. And ye shall be left few in number at the 62nd verse, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou didst not hawk unto the voice of Jehovah thy God. And it shall come to pass that as Jehovah rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so that so Jehovah will rejoice over you to cause you to perish and to destroy you and ye shall be plucked off the land whether thou goest in to possess it. So when you read that verse 63, also reading the conjunction with Isaiah 53, you'll see how it makes perfect sense, where it said that the Most High, in that, in Isaiah 53, he, he, he desired to crush his servant with disease. And it says here in 63 that as the Most High rejoiced to do good, he will rejoice over us to cause us to perish. So that shows again that connection with the children of Israel, Isaiah 53, that connection with the children of Israel and the people of God overall, all throughout the world. Continue. And Jehovah shall scatter thee among all peoples, from the one end of the earth even unto the other of the earth, and there shall, and there thou shalt serve other gods with a small g, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, even wood and stone. So the children of Israel are scattered all throughout the earth and end up being in religions that they're not supposed to be in. But that is a part of the covenant. It's part of that blinding that the Most High put upon the children of Israel as a result of disobedience. So again, when we are enlightened to this way of life, it's not for us to ridicule or you look down on people who may not have this understanding, but just understand that we are all under the same punishment. And it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to help others to get together. Because yeah. again, the Most High it wants to bless all of the children of Israel, not just a portion. We know that a remnant will enter, but it's incumbent upon all of us to live right. Amen. to do good so that we can get out of this captivity and let the most high select who's actually going to get into the land. We're not part of that process. Our responsibility is to do good and help others do good. The most high will decide who actually gets into the land again. Continue. And among these nations at the 65th verse, thou shalt find no repulse. No peace, and basically. And there shall no rest for the sole of thy foot. However, Jehovah shall give thee there a trembling heart and frailing of eyes and languishing of soul. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear night and day, and shall have no assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say what it were evening, and at evening thou shalt say what it were morning. For the fear of thy heart which thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. So that's see. where we were early about grouping, groping, groping at noonday. In the morning you would say you wish it was night, you wish the day would go past. At night, you just want the next, you know, the, you just you want to speed up life. Because right. things are going so bad that you don't want right. to take time to just relax exactly. and enjoy life. You just want time to be sped up. Exactly. We're supposed to be enjoying life. We're supposed to be living long and just having peace and take everything day by day. Right. But when there's so much stress, you just you think that just another day coming in will end the stress, and it actually doesn't. So that cycle just continues to go day by day, and we want to get out of that cycle. But the only way to get out of that cycle it's about turning to the Most High God. Because he's the only one that can turn away our captivity away Hallelujah. from us. Continue. And Jehovah shall bring thee back into Egypt in ships. By way thereof I said unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall sell yourselves unto your enemies for bondmen and for bondwomen, and no man shall pay. And that's the verse that encapsulates everything right there that shows that there was only one group of people that went, into, or went back into Egypt, and Egypt representing slavery, and Egypt is just connected by land to the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. So going back into Egypt is going back into slavery by ships. But by a way that we're aware of, he said unto thee, we were not supposed to see slavery anymore. Right. But because of disobedience, now the children of Israel will see slavery via slave ships. And going. so we see all of these signs that the Most High said what happened to the children of Israel, the yoke of iron, being hungry, naked, and one of all things, and going to slavery by ships. So whereas the first 14 verses of blessings are what we're supposed to identify ourselves with, unfortunately we identify ourselves with these remaining verses of this chapter. But this is all part of that covenant that we have broken, which is mentioned in this verse right here. 
These are the words of the covenant which Jehovah commanded Prophet Moshe to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant he made with them in Horeb. Okay, and we're just going to read those nine verses, those eight verses actually in 29. But again, this is an agreement that the Most High made with the children of Israel. So by breaking it, cause all of those things to happen. But by keeping that covenant and all of the commandments, what we read prior in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, will come to pass for the children of Israel. As we will also read that in Deuteronomy chapter 30 next week. Continue. 29th chapter, the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And prophet Moshe called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that Jehovah did before your eyes in the land of Mitzrayim unto Paro, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land, the great trials which thine eyes have seen, and the signs and those great wonders However, Yehovah have not given you a heart to know and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten, ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine, no strong drink, that ye may know that I am Yehovah. So Jehovah God is speaking to the children of Israel in this generation about all the things that were done there. But again, think about your own life and what the Most High has allowed you to get through to be able to be here this day. So where we was happy and we read the things earlier, but don't dwell in the sadness of the end of Deuteronomy chapter 28. We are a holy people and we are a great people in the sight of the Most High. Amen. And once we do good, he will elevate us once again. Hallelujah. So this punishment, this slavery, this captivity is not something that's supposed to be on us forever. The Most High desires to do as good as he said. He desires to have the blessings chase us and overtake us. Amen. And he's commanding blessings upon us. Hallelujah. Again, we are a holy people who the name of Jehovah God is called within. And all the nations of the face of the earth will be afraid of us if we're doing the right thing in the sight of the Most High God. So don't let us become sad by what has happened, but let that be an opportunity to turn to the Most High God who has given us everything. That's why after all of this, he says, remember what Jehovah God did in bringing us out of Egypt. Remember what the Most High God did for you. Remember when you were hungry. Remember when you were jobless. Remember when you were homeless. Remember you were just in a cheap apartment. But the Most High blessed you to be in a house, right. to be, or be in a big apartment, to have a refrigerator full of food today. Okay. Wait, lunch break, of course, we know it's past lunch break. But lunch break is about to ha happen. And when you left your house this morning, you were deciding what to take. That's because Jehovah God has blessed you. He has made you a great people to remember what the Most High God did on your behalf and saving you and giving you that salvation. So these are the things that allow us to be joyful and rejoice before the Most High for the good things that he had done on our behalf in the conclusion. And when ye came unto this place, Shehong, the king of Heshbon, and all the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to the half-tribe of the Manashites. And this is, the, again, this is the important key for everything, this verse right here. Observe, therefore, the words of this covenant, and do them, that ye may make all ye do to prosper. Hallelujah. 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 So we give praise and honor to the Most High, for he's the only one that can allow us to obtain success and prosperity. And the key to that is by observing all of the commandments, not just some, not just most, but all of the commandments of the Most High. And then he will allow the works of your hands to be blessed, and you'll be successful in everything that you do, everywhere you go, no one will be able to stand before you because you'll be successful in your schooling and in your work and in everything that you want to do in your housing and your food and your clothing. Jehovah who has created the heaven and the earth said that we are a holy people before him. He is the one that can bless us. So let us turn to the Most High. We know this is an election year, but vote for Jehovah God. 